Shalom, Ms. Levi Shore. Welcome back to Sweet and Good Torah. We are blessed to have Rabbi Mordechai Darvish with us. It is the second night of Hanukkah. We are bathing in the holy light of Hanukkah. I right, saw so way back when, during the days of the Greek Empire, the Greeks were actually, they were, they were uh, Antiochus, the king of the Greeks, he passed all these harsh decrees about, you know, against the Jewish people. And we actually weren't allowed to learn Torah. We weren't allowed to keep Shabbos. They were burning safer Torahs. We weren't allowed to have a bris mila, circumcision. We weren't allowed to keep kosher. They didn't want us calculating the Rosh Kodesh. And, they, and it says like all these decrees against us, it like black in the eyes of the Jewish people. And that's why Yavan or Greece is called darkness. But we, we battle it. We battle it with the light, the, the Neros. You hear, see here the Neros in the background. Our little Neros, our 36 Neros through our eight nights of Hanukkah, taking us back to the, the infinite light, the, uh, the 36 hours that Adam and Kava, Adam and Eve were in Gan Eden, in the Garden of Eden. And we, we well, reconnect to that infinite light. Uh, you want to you wanna jump right in? You got some Hanukkah stuff? No, I was, uh, I was going to say, explain to us these 36 lights. Ah. And... <laughs> Yes, the mystical 36 lights. So there was this original light. So Hashem in the Kabbalah, he's called the Ein Sof, the without end, the infinite being. Because really Hashem is beyond all comprehension. He's beyond our comprehension. He's infinite being. We're finite. We can't ever comprehend the mind of Hashem. And then there's this emanation that comes from Hashem, the Or Ein Sof, the light of the infinite being, the infinite light. And that infinite light was hidden away in Olam Haba, in the world to come for the Siddiquim, for the righteous in the future. But Adam and Chava, Adam and Eve, they got to see this light for the 12 hours on Erev Shabbos, going into Shabbos, and then the 24 hours of that very first Shabbos, they were in the Garden of Eden. And the 36 lights, so we light through eight nights. We light, you know, one on the first night, then two on the second. So we end up lighting 36 Neros, 36 candles. And that reconnects us back to that infinite light. So it's a very powerful time. It's a time of Ga'ula, a time that can pull us out of our gullus. It, it, it brings us light in the darkness. We have these short, cold winter days, which represent the exile. And this is our light. This is our hope. This was the last revealed miracle of Hashem. And Hashem did for us. Uh, you wanna, you wanna... So, so basically what you're telling us is that we don't light candles to remember something or like to do something that they did way back when it has a cosmic influence. This fact that we're just lighting candles down here, it's bringing down a light that, that was, um, that was once upon a time. And now we're tapping into it and bringing it down to this world. That's what you're saying. Right. Yeah. So I think that's an important concept of all Jewish holidays that the Jewish holiday happened at that time because there's a spiritual energy during that time of year. So for instance, like Pesach, Passover, there is that spiritual energy for freedom, for release, for what's holding us back. And that's why we escaped Egypt at that time. And so, so to the war of Hanukkah, there's this special spiritual energy at this time, at this time of year, it starts on the 25th of Kislev, that we could tap into the Maccabees, the Chashmonayim. They tapped into that spiritual energy. Yeah, you want to you say something? Yeah, I want to say something that people don't know this. The word Chanukah is Chanu. They received um, um, uh, grace from Hashem hmm. and Kav Hay of, of Kislev, the, the 25th of the month of Kislev. So Chanukah, they, they received this divine grace and divine uh, uh, redemption from, from Hashem on the 25th. So that's what we call Chanukah, Chanu and, and the Kav Hay in the 25th of the month. Right, so there's a special, right, there's special spiritual energy that can connect us to the infinite, connect us to that infinite light. And that's why we see the miracles of Hanukkah. That's why this small Jewish army could defeat this mighty, you know, this mighty, massive, powerful Greek army that, that really outnumbered them. And the few could beat the many. So it goes against the Teva, it goes against the natural world, which the Greeks are, so, the Greco-Roman system are so into. How many, how many Jews were there? How many Jews were fighting? Oh, the exact, oh, now you're going to ask me the exact numbers? Uh, I don't know, I mean, I saw well, one I, battle. Probably, you know, yeah. I saw yeah. one battle that was like 5,000 against maybe like, you know, like 20 and 25,000. I, I I don't know the exact numbers, you know. The, yeah, yeah, it was something like, like uh, I've seen, like maybe 10 people against 10, an army of 10,000. Yeah. 
I, I, I don't know. I mean, the numbers were overwhelming. I mean, you, you had a powerful Greek empire. So you had like, you know, hundreds of thousands of troops, millions of troops in their whole army. I, you know, they all, they get sent. And the Jewish people really didn't have an army at that time. We, you know, we were, um, you know, we were literally talking about like yeshiva students, Torah scholars, you know, going out to war. It wasn't like a professional army that was coming out, you know, to fight. But it's like this right. a special energy in this time can help us tap into the infinite. And I think that's why there's some aspect of the Gaula of, of getting out of our exile in Hanukkah. Hanukkah has some relationship to it. I think that's why we sing the song Ma'ot Zor, and it takes us through first like the exile and the redemption from Egypt, and then the exile and the redemption from Babylon, the exile and the redemption from, from Persia, you know, from the Persian Empire, and then the exile and the redemption from, from the Greek Empire, and then this long what we call Golis Edom, this long, you know, exile of Edom, the, the Roman Empire, the philosophy of the Roman Empire for the last 2,000, 21 years. And, and we're seeing that we want to get out of this exile. We want this exile to end. And, and Hanukkah, there's that spiritual energy there available to us to get out of it. What are we going to do when we get out of this exile? What are we going to do? I mean, what's the go? point? What's the point? I mean, like people's lives seem like they're they're okay right now. What's going on? What's what's this exile all about? Right, and that and I think that's what we're battling. So we talk a little bit about like Hellenism. Like, why is it so attractive? Why is like, you know, the science, the philosophy, the art and culture of the Western world? You know, it started in Greece, but it's really a Greco-Roman culture. You know, so we see how powerful. I mean, like big blockbuster Hollywood movies. They just like draws people in like the excitement of like an NFL game, you know, the Super Bowl, like look how many millions of people watch tune in for the Super Bowl, you know, the big rock concerts, you know, the, the famous books, you know, like look at how many people were, you know, seduced, you know, by Harry Potter, you know, so there's something powerful and there's, and there's a beauty to Yavon. There's a beauty to, to the, you know, to the, this Greco Roman Western world. I mean, we see beautiful buildings, you know, beautiful cities like technological innovations and, you know, great, you know, you know, universities and colleges. So there's, there's an intelligence there. There's a culture there and it's, and it's seductive, but the Torah still calls it darkness because it, you, you only see the physical world. You don't see the higher spiritual worlds and, and you don't, and you don't see the infinite being, you don't see the infinite creator. You don't see Hashem. And the whole purpose of the world is that everyone in the world should have a relationship with Hashem. And these lights are also a reminder of that, that Hashem's with us. And then when we have this infinite, infinite being on our side, there's nothing that can stop us. There's nothing that, you know, we can't, there's no so what, we can't overcome. Yeah. What will be, what will be different if we were redeemed as opposed to being in exile? If we were, okay. So you, so <laughs> I'm dodging your question. No, I wasn't really dodging it, but no. So, I mean, so like, I, right. I think it's a great question you say, cause like, do we even a lot of times like in America, do we even feel like we're in exile? I think a lot of us, we don't even feel like we are in exile. We feel like we're home here, you know, and we don't really feel sometimes like Eretz Israel, like the land of Israel is our home. But what's missing from the world, the world is in the darkness right now in a way because there's not a clear sense of Hashem in the world. You know, it's almost like we live in this secular atheist Western culture right now. And so right, God, yeah. right, what's that? Yeah, like, being got, right? yeah, Hashem being got like kind of, kind of devoid of that clear connection. I got most people don't have that clear connection, and I, and I really believe that's why there's a lot of depression and sadness, and a lot of like you know you know you know you know tension in relationships right now, because we don't feel that connection with God. We don't feel that connection with Hashem, and it's making us it's making us hard for us to connect with each other. But when we go home in the Gula, when we get to all go back to Israel. And Bizra Hashem, we have a king, a Mashiach, you know, a, a king of Israel who's teaching the world the wisdom of the Torah. But when we, when we rebuild the base of Mikdash, we'll see the we'll see the miraculous again, because the spiritual worlds will can come down into the physical world. They'll be joined instead of separated. And people, when we had the temple, we used to see the miraculous, like you would see by day, you know, in the holy of the holies. I think coming up from the holy of the holies was that pillar of cloud in the Shekhinah. That physical, you know, manifestation of God in the world was there, and then I think at night it was that pillar of fire, and you could so see. So basically, it. people people will feel God more as opposed to right now. People will know, how, even though Hashem fills all the world right now, it's all dark and it, and, and it's exile, and, and people don't feel it. You know, people don't feel. It. But people, it'll be it'll be palatable. 
it'll be, be powerful. powerful. We like see and sense, like Hashem will be in the world every day. It'll be clear, you know, it will feel connected to Hashem. And I think it's so. What's, be- so, so what's the what, what, what's the what can we do to get that uh, right <laughs> to get that process rolling around, rolling okay. along? What can we do? No, so I think what the gifts we were given. So what the Greeks were trying to stop us from doing is the the great gifts we were given to connect with Hashem and connect the world. So the Torah is the blueprint of all creation. Hashem gave it to us as a gift, and it's our job. It's the job of the Jewish people to be the or to be the light to the nations. And the light is the, the spiritual wisdom of the Torah. So when we start learning the Torah, you know, all the Jewish people are learning the Torah again and doing the mitzvot. And the mitzvot start teaching us how to be more giving people, connecting with each other. You know, like beautiful mitzvahs like, you know, tzedakah. Or if like you see someone has a load in their animal. What's tzedakah? So, What's yeah, tzedakah? You know, so if someone's poor, if someone needs some money, if someone needs some food, you know, if someone needs a job, like whatever we can do to start uplifting each other. I mean, that's one of the beautiful mitzvahs of the Torah. You know, the, you know, some mitzvahs are tricky, but, you know, we should like, you know, one, Rabbi Akiva said the greatest of all mitzvahs, the Klau Gadol, the, the, all the Torah in a sense is the mitzvah, mitzvah of the Achafta Lereacha Kamoka, love your friend like yourself. I, and, and Rabbi Kiva is saying, in a sense, that's the whole general goal of the Torah to get us to there. And, and we want to be more like Hashem. We want to be more giving people instead of just taking, taking, taking a world of taking right now, where everyone's like, how much can I take? How much can I earn? How much can I get? But we're all looking to do, you know, kindness and good for each other. And then mm. it becomes the warmer world, a, lo- a world more full of light. And we become more like Hashem. We become more givers. And um, and then like all these mitzvahs, like so the bris milah, the circumcision, is a constant reminder of our connection, our covenant with Hashem. And Shabbos, Shabbos is the constant reminder every week that Hashem created everything. Hashem created the mice of Rishi, So Hashem created the world. And we feel that connection. And it's just beautiful to take in this frantic modern world to take that day, turn off this phone, turn off the computer, turn off, you know, whatever, turn it all off, turn off the news, turn off the movies, the music, everything, and just connect again with nature, you know, like see that Hashem has created all this, you know, connect with the trees and, you know, the animals. And, and we really, and when we turn everything off, we really see it's a beautiful world. It's a beautiful so would you, world. So would you, would you say that's the cosmic goal? Uh, I, I mean, I think Hashem's goal, one of the Hashem's main goals is that Hashem wants a relationship with everyone he created, with all his, you know, all his children, all the men and women, children in the world, are Hashem's children. So, ba- so, so basically, that's the cosmic goal, the relationship with God. The one, and the Greeks the one, yeah. came and darkened it and gave us a relationship with nature, right? And the physical right. world. Right. So they And because, because they, 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 they give us that, that darkness, which is darkness, quote unquote, with meaning the connection with the physical world it could be a very intelligent connection mm-hmm. right yeah. but it's not the true connection and and we have to reconnect back by using the tools which is the torah learning the torah and the mitzvahs to right. connect so back be, to the yeah. Yeah. creator no because it can be a first step so i don't have the hebrew to bring up here but the word yavan is for greece is is yud you know vav final nun so it's like one line and then a little longer line and then a longer line but if you take the Sadiq, if you take the letter Sadi, you know, the Sadiq, you know, the holy righteous, you know, person that's purely connected with Shem is driven out evil from himself, just all good. You add the Sadiq to Yavan, you get Sion, you know, you get Zion, you get, which, which is the Hara Bias, the Temple Mount, where the Torah, where the, the, the temple was built, and Bizrat Hashem will be built again. So when you take the beauty of Yavan, you take the beauty of Greece, but you elevate it to the higher level, and then Sadi connects it up to the spiritual worlds. So when you take the physical world, but then you reconnect it up back to the spiritual worlds, then you get a world of light. You know, then you get a world, not just so I right. So what's distracting people right now? I mean, you know, this Greco-Roman culture, like people are just so distracted. You know, we have all these video games you can play, you have all these movies, streaming movies all the time. You see any movie you ever want, any TV show you ever want. And we're kind of like living in this like fantasy. And even the news is not really always reporting exactly what's going on. They kind of have their narratives. They, like, they write a storyline. They kind of fit what's going on into their storyline. So it's like, that's the darkness. You know, it's like exciting. Everything's binging and bopping and 
pinging and notifications and social media and this and that. everything's like everyone's like in this like frenzy you know this 21st you know century like digital frenzy but it's kind of distracting us it's really a darkness but in a way we have this connection like we have the technology to connect with each other but we kind of forgot like how to really connect you know and I kind so of, so so you, you say there is a cosmic goal yeah. Except the players, the players on the team have forgotten the cosmic goal yeah. and the way to score the points to get to that cosmic goal. Yeah. I mean, I think we kind of been distracted. Like we've been distracted. Like if you want to use the, the muscle, you know, of like a, a game, a sporting event, you know, yeah. we've, been, we've been directed to play a different game. We're playing, you know, we're playing the, the Greek game, you know, we're playing the football and the baseball or, or, the, or the Mario Kart or, or whatever, or well, Fortnite, you know, like we're playing, yeah. the, we're playing those games. But there's the real goal of the world. And the goal is like to, you know, eradicate evil, you know, in ourselves and in the world and get back to that state of Gan Eden, the Garden of Eden, where a world is so, connected to God, you know, a world is connected. Yeah. So if you were to analogize it to, to a football game, you'd say like a football game has 60 minutes. Yeah. So we have 6,000 years yeah. for this to play yeah. out. Yeah. Um, you, you have the home team, which is us, right? Yeah. And you have the, the away team, right the the defense and that would be it'd say the it's the evil inclination right the satan right yeah. satan out there trying to get us not to do our job right and and the 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 commandments in the world are our points yeah right and we're trying to rack up as many points as possible to 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 win the to win the championship basically right yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, to use your muscle, like, I think we're definitely in the fourth quarter, <laughs> you know, like, okay, all right, all right, minutes, maybe, to go. <laughs> maybe, the, warning? maybe the two minute warning is your Moza Mashiach, maybe the two minute warning is when Mashiach actually comes, but we're getting close to that two minute warning, and then we just want to go in the red zone and drive it all the way through, score the touchdown, like getting rid of the eight Sahara, getting rid of the evil impulse. And, and, you know, and, and blocking out like what's distracting us in the end zone, you know, is that's Garden of Eden, you know, that's, that's a, a rebuilt temple, that's a world at peace. That's a world where people are connecting with each other and, and peace and shalom connecting, you know, have peace with us and, you know, Hashem, you know, you know, so, you know, you know, like, um, recently, in, in the news everywhere, it's uh, people are talking about like manifestation, there's the book that came out the secret. Mm -hmm. And people are just like, what's in your head? That's what you're manifesting in the world. Yeah. So if we take Torah and we put that into our heads, that's what will be manifest in the world. That light, that beautiful cosmic light that, uh, of the infinite one that we want to bring down into this world. If it's what's in our thoughts and in our emotions and in our conscious and our subconscious, that's what will be manifest in the world. Wouldn't you say? Right. Yeah, no. Yeah. So. So I, I, I'm not so familiar with the secret, but, uh, but right. But I think Torah, like it helps us, right. It, it helps, you know, our thoughts can be like holier thoughts, thoughts of like kindness and giving and compassion. And then our speech can become more, you know, kind and compassionate. And then our actions can be, so it can purify us. But I think most of us right now, like we, you know, even if we're learning Torah, I mean, some of us can just be lost in this goal. It's just lost in that whole, you know, Western culture. But even when we're learning Torah, even when we're at Yeshiva and learning Torah, still, you know, we can be like reading, you know, reading this book or watching this movie. And it's just that battle. Like, you know, I got I got this holy thought here, but now I'm thinking about, you know, you know, what's going to happen. That's, that, you know, so. that's what they said about Alicia Benavuya, one of our greatest sages, yeah. that um, that that's what he did. He was one of, you know, he climbed all the ladders of holiness <laughs> and even got to the, the secrets and the Kabbalah, the real deep stuff. And at the end, he um, he became an apostate, meaning he le he left Torah and that <clears throat> the whole way of righteousness. And they said about him that when he was yeshiva, he had two books on his laps, right? Like one is a Torah book, and the other was a Greek uh, mm -hmm. Roman philosophy book. And and because he had both these thoughts in his head, that penetrated his his psyche to the point where, in the end, the results came out uh, negative. <clears throat> yeah, no, and I. So, think yeah. yeah yeah no and i think some some you know we have to like we're gonna and, 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 and i think i think one of his uh one of his disciples was rebbe mayer and rebbe mayer even after he became an apostate like he he left the way of torah um rebbe mayer came to him and was still learning torah from him yeah. and they they asked the sages asked well how can you do that what's the matter with you why are you learning 
Torah from a person who's not so holy. And he said, well, I know how to differentiate between the fruit and the peel. Mm. Basically, I know how to take what's good and leave what's bad. And I think some people think they know how to do that or they, they, they have the capability to do that. And so they say, well, what's wrong with learning a little bit of this and a little bit of that? Okay. But they don't realize that they themselves don't have the power that Ruby Mayer had. Yeah, no, it's it's very tricky. And, and then you're just, yeah, I mean, you know, it's very tricky. I, I remember an experience I had in Los Angeles. I was, um, before I went to Asia Torah, I was working on this screenplay. I was writing a, a screenplay, like a sequel to the movie Ten Commandments. So I, I was like, I was, I was learning a lot of Torah and I was writing the screenplay. I remember, this is a, a real flashback. I remember going to a blockbuster video and, um, and learning the Torah was having an effect on me. And it was like um, getting rid of that like desire, like, you know, for this, you know, the, the, the more the secular culture. I'm, I'm, I'm in the blockbuster video and I'm going through like video to video. And I was like, I don't want to watch any of this stuff. <laughs> I was like, I, I just like my mind was like, like you're saying is so in the Torah. So visualizing, you know, like, you know, what it was like those 40 years in the desert. And it's funny. I walked in that blockbuster video that night and I was like, it kind of dampened my desire for the physical world. You know, it's like, I don't want to watch any of these movies right now. I have no desire to watch any of these movies. I just walked out without getting anything. So, so I think, right, I think Torah, the more the Jewish people can start learning Torah, right, it's going to start to like, we're, these fantasies, these fantasy stories are all exciting and interesting, but a lot of them are pretty empty. And the, and the Torah, the more Torah we're learning, it does start to like, um, diminishes that desire for this fantasy it gets us more and the mitzvahs get us more into reality more like we're interacting with people we're helping other people we're doing real things like a mitzvah like you know don't bear a grudge don't seek revenge we're fighting against negative you know character traits you know we're building you know better character traits you know so, so are you are you telling me the, that uh, living a torah lifestyle is better than the metaverse <laughs> the met yeah no but i'm saying but it, it get like Whereas like playing video games and watching movies, we're just constantly in this fantasy world. But like doing the mitzvahs, we, it, it gets us interacting with other people. We're, we're actually doing things. We're doing things in the world. We're looking to give tzedakah, looking to help people out. And it's just more of a, um, I mean, if, okay, if we want to use the mushroom video game, it's a real life video game, you know, that makes the world better. So like you can be this great hero and like, let's say, you know, some video game like Fortnite, like I, I never played it, but I think you just, Go around shooting a lot of people you know it's like so you know you you've, you've killed hundreds of thousands of people in fortnite it's not even real but but whereas you do some mitzvahs you you really help someone you make their life better and it's very powerful to be a real life you know like video game hero you know and, and just a fantasy so, like video game. so what you're saying is that we're essentially in a simulation video type game <laughs> where every night you know, we come, we come back down to this world. We say, thank God that you brought me back because when I left my uh, soul with you, I didn't know when I whether I would be coming back to this, to this world and waking up in the morning. Right. Mm -hmm. And in this world, we have like all sorts of challenges and things being thrown at us and we have to knock them down one by one. And the tools that we use is the Torah and the mitzvahs, the commandments. Mm -hmm. Right. <clears throat> and basically when a person learns to see it like that, then his whole life becomes uh, an arcade, right? <laughs> yeah. His life is the metaverse, right? His life is the, yeah. the, the virtual reality because everything's a gift. It's all, it's all a gift that, that we, I didn't, I didn't create myself. Did you create yourself? No, not that I, I didn't. I, I didn't. I didn't put myself in this world. Did you put yourself in this world? Not that I know. I didn't give myself, I didn't pick this body. Did you pick your body? No. Oh. Now, so what, what really do we control? If it's, this isn't a game, right? And if there isn't a cosmic ruler and the point to it, if there's no point to it, then what is the point to it, right? right. Why can't, why shouldn't I rape and pillage and, and take and, and do what I want to do in this world, right? Yeah. If there's no point to the game, right? If there is no goal, then what's the point? I'll just go around, like you said, killing and taking whatever I want. Yeah, no. So, I mean, I think, so the Gemara says, it's very interesting, like, you know, I think we have an illusion that we really have control. So I, I don't know. I mean, some people, maybe they've planned and their plans work out. I, I know like every time I've had goals and plans for life, you know, Hashem's always like switched me, you know, here and there. So I don't know how many people like have lived the life exactly as they envision it. 
but we don't always have a choice. Like, you know, I mean, sometimes we are wealthier, sometimes we're poor, or sometimes we're healthier, sometimes we're sicker. We don't always have control over that. But the Torah says something interesting. Like the only thing we truly have control over is to be good or not. You know, so that's what every day, like you're saying. And who, de who, de who defines good or not? No, so the Torah, I mean, the Torah, so the, right, the infinite being, like the infinite creator. I mean, we, we have our own biases. We have our own temptations. So we are very, sometimes we don't have a clear view of the world, but we get from the Torah, we get this infinite view or we get a, clear, it? we get a clear view from an infinite being who's the actual creator. So it's like the uh, Rav Noach Weinberg's, so he always say that it's like the Torah is Chayim. The Torah is the instructions for living. This is the instruction manual. This is how, you know, if you want to use the mushroom of the game, this is how the game's played. And the goal of the game, how we win, is becoming a good person, you know, getting rid of evil. And then the ultimate goal, the Jewish people's ultimate goal to win is to, to eradicate evil from the world. So, right, so the world got onto this track of knowledge of good and evil. When Adam and Kava, Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But our goal is the eighth Chaim. The Torah is the eighth Chaim, the tree of life. And our goal is to get to a world of all good. And, that, and that's what's called Olam Abba, the world to come. And that's what we're doing. We're trying to become good, trying to make the world good. And we want that, that world of Shalom, you know, that world, no more, you know, the world of all Chaim, all life, no more death, no more sickness, no, no more fighting, just peace and Shalom. You know, and that's, and that's the goal. That's where we're at. You know, like, I, you know, if I was said to somebody, they say, yeah, it sounds good. It sounds cute. A lot of the lofty ideas and all that stuff. You know, I don't know what you would say to them, but I would say to them, open it up and check. We could be right. We could be wrong. Just why don't you take a gander? You know, the books out there, open up the tour and start reading. See if it is what we're, what we're espousing. And, and if it is, it, then you luck down. And if it isn't, we're just a bunch of liars. No, I mean, I think, right, I think it's a great question, right? It is like very, it's beautiful, lofty, ideal, you know, idealism, ide ideology. Um, but I, I mean, I think for me personally, it's just, uh, I can see over the years, it's just, um, right, it's made me happier. It's made me, uh, you know, slowly getting calmer and, you know, just, um, and it just, I just feel like, you know, my life is, uh, I, I feel like a better person. I mean, you don't always notice it. You know, it's like drops of water, as Rabbi Kiva said. You don't notice it right away, but you start looking back like, wow, how I changed from last year or five years ago or 10 years ago. And all these little drops of water, all these little mitzvot start to add up. And you start to see that you really have become a kinder, more compassionate person, more filled with wisdom. So but as you're saying, so the test, you know, you know, see, I mean, see if, you know, doing a couple of mitzvahs, how do you feel? Do you feel like a better person? It's a feel good to do something nice for someone, you know, does that make you feel like a better person? And that's, you know, that's the, uh, right. That's maybe the true test of Torah. How do you feel when you learn some wisdom? How do you feel when you do something good for someone else? And does that make you feel good? Yeah. And that's maybe the true test. <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's been a tough questions, not, not easy questions tonight. Any, any I feel like the interior, what? Any final, uh, any final comments or? Well, yeah, I, I would just say that, um, you know, the Greeks try to eradicate our connection by not letting us practice what we're supposed to practice. Um, even if we were in the land of Israel, that's where the Greek story happened. And, you know, we are stubborn people, stiff necked people that no matter what, we love our God. We said we'll do no matter what you tell us, because you took us out of Egypt, you took us out of bondage. So we're, we're beholden to you. We're in love with you. We're going to do whatever you want. And even in this long, dark exile, I'm still going to light my candles. I'm still going to put them, you know, in my house. And I'm still going to remember the miracles that you did for me. I'm going to acknowledge that you're the one who's doing everything. <laughs> and it's not the strength of my hand or, um, you know, the people around me or the country that I'm living in. It's you. You're the ultimate good. You're the ultimate um, doer of everything. And that acknowledgement and, um, you know, I'm, I want to learn your will and I'll open up that Torah. I'll open up and see what your will is. Right. And you'll reveal to me, you know, my purpose, my soul, what I'm doing here, who I, who I really am. I truly am. A lot of these new age people talk about, yeah, you really got to connect to who you really are and all that stuff. Well, that's all like nice and good and ideals, but there's no practical way to do that. Um, the Torah is that practical way when a person opens it up and really looks inside and all of it, not just the one book, 
you know, the many books of the Torah um, and sees it as a whole thing, then it's something like a person doesn't want to leave, even in this long, dark exile. The, like the, the, a person feels like they can't breathe without it. Yeah. It's, it, it really is like, um, and, and, and God says, like, at the end of the days, I'm going to send a thirst in the world. I'm going to send a hunger in the world. But the hunger won't be for bread and the thirst won't be for water. It's going to be to hear my Torah, to hear what's in it. So we could be one step ahead of the game because that's what's going to happen um, towards the end of the days. People are going to be so thirsty. We're going to be so disgusted with this world yeah. that they're going to want to see the true light. So mm -hmm. I, I, a person who's been doing it for 20 years, would tell somebody, you know, get on it and get on it as soon as you can, because, um, you know, you're just wasting your life. You're wasting your time. And, and, and really like, like, uh, you, you could be ahead of the game before anybody else is, is there. Yeah. We're almost at the two minute warning. So we gotta, we gotta go. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, I mean, I just want to say like, you know, Hanukkah Sameach, everyone should have a happy Hanukkah. You know, if you like it, please, uh, you know, like, share and subscribe and, and let us know if you have any Torah questions and we hope to see you back soon.